The History of Islam in Africa, Part 1 The introduction of Islam into Africa was a pivotal moment in the history of the continent in terms of the eventual influence the religion would have on various African kingdoms and empires. Often fused and intertwined with traditional African beliefs, the religion would go on to become the dominant belief system within great African powers such as the Kanem-Borno Empire, the Mali Empire, the Songhai Empire, the Sokoto Caliphate, the Almoravid Dynasty, the Almohad Dynasty, the Fun Sultanate, the Sultanate of Mogadishu, the Hausa Kingdoms, and the Ajuran Sultanate, to name a few. In the present day, almost 50% of the continent of Africa follows the religion of Islam. The religion of Islam. The term Islam means submission, or more specifically, total submission to the will of God. The religion is one of the three Abrahamic religions, the other two being Judaism and Christianity. Islam was brought to Arabia by the Prophet Muhammad, although it is understood within the religion that Prophet Muhammad taught exactly the same message as all of the prophets in the Abrahamic religions, including but not limited to Adam, Noah, Moses, Abraham, David, Solomon, and Jesus. Prophet Muhammad is considered to be the final prophet of God or the seal of the prophets. Prophet Muhammad was an Arab who was born in Arabia in 570 AD. The foundation of the religion included a total of six articles of faith, which all Muslims believe in. The articles of faith are 1. A belief in the existence of one God, also known as monotheism. 2. A belief in angels. 3. A belief in the existence of the books of God, which include the Quran, the Gospel, the Torah and the Psalms. 4. A belief in the prophets of God. 5. A belief in predestination. And 6. A belief in the day of judgment, which is a day in which all humans after death are judged based on their deeds during life and sent either to heaven, paradise, or hell, punishment. The religion of Islam also includes five pillars or core beliefs. And these are 1. The belief that there is no God but God, and Muhammad is the messenger of God. This is also known as the Declaration of Faith, or the Shahada. 2. Prayer, in that Muslims pray facing Mecca in Arabia five times a day, and the times for prayer are at sunrise, noon, mid-afternoon, sunset, and at night. 3. Alms or Zakat which in Islamic law is the act of giving to the poor at least 2.5% of your wealth. 4. Fasting during the daylight hours of Ramadan, which is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar, and a holy month dedicated to prayer, reflection, and good deeds. 5. Hajj, which is the practice of an annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca in Arabia, modern-day Saudi Arabia, the holiest city for Muslims. For Muslims who can afford this journey, are physically able and are capable of supporting their family during their absence from home, this is performed at least once in their lifetime. The Prophet Muhammad, who was in Arabia, received the holy book of Islam called the Quran, orally from God through the Archangel Gabriel, incrementally over a period of some 23 years, beginning when Muhammad was 40 years of age in 610 AD. The Quran is considered the final book in a series of holy books, of which God is the author. The First Introduction of Islam into Africa The Prophet Muhammad first began to spread the religion of Islam in Arabia, which is located east of the continent of Africa, in the region of modern-day Saudi Arabia, in around 613 AD, and he was successful in gaining a significant following. His early followers would come to include both Arabs and Africans, as well as Persians, Romans, and Jews. 
by 614 AD, Muhammad and his followers were under significant attack and persecution by other groups within the region, including followers of polytheism and also members of the powerful Arab Quraysh tribe in Arabia. And so, as the oppression of the new Muslims within Arabian territory, specifically in the Arabian city of Mecca continued and intensified, a new verse from the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Muhammad in Surah al nal chapter 16, verse 42, which stated the following, As for those who have forsaken their homes for the sake of Allah after enduring persecution, we shall certainly grant them a good abode in this world, and surely the reward of the hereafter is much greater, if they could but know what an excellent end awaits. Soon after this, the Prophet Muhammad provided the following advice to his followers. If you were to go to Abyssinia, it would be better for you, for the king will not tolerate injustice, and it is a friendly country, until such time as Allah shall relieve you from your distress. The region of Ethiopia was also known as Abyssinia during these days. At this time in Eastern Africa, the Ethiopian Kingdom of Aksum had already been firmly established and until 570 AD also controlled the territory of Southern Arabia in the region of modern-day Yemen. The ruler of Ethiopia was King Amal, who was also known as Al-Najashi. The king of Ethiopia is also referred to as the Negus. The Ethiopians during this period were devoted Christians, a religion which had been introduced by the previous Ethiopian king, Azana, who came to power in 320 AD. King Ama of Ethiopia was well known to be a strong and just leader, and his kingdom was prosperous, powerful and peaceful. In order to escape persecution, Muhammad and his followers contacted the leadership of Ethiopia for assistance. Under the instruction of Muhammad, the earlier followers of Islam fled from Arabia into Africa, specifically the nation of Ethiopia. Within the Islamic tradition, this is a well-known event called the Migration to Abyssinia, and it is also known as the First Hijra. Many Ethiopians and other Africans close to the region would begin to adopt the religion. This was the first introduction of Islam into the continent of Africa to a large degree, 